Hundreds of meters of vertical drop define the workspace in the majestic Andes Mountains of South America. Engineers split sheer cliffs to build a massive road under conditions so extreme that stability is rare. But this is just the beginning. Why force a road to cling to near vertical cliffs? It would appear easier to bypass the jagged peaks entirely to avoid the risk, but only this surface route reconnects regions that were isolated for centuries by the terrain. Crews execute millimeter-level calculations for precisely controlled drilling and blasting. One can notice how the stone fractures along specific fault lines after detonation. It seems simple, but in reality, the smallest mistake can send the entire project sliding straight into ravines deep below. Machines weighing hundreds of tons hold their ground. It is visible how the heavy equipment operates while clinging to steep mountain slopes. These winding roads trace the mountainsides like steel threads, opening the way. 3,000 to 4,500 meters is the altitude where highways in Peru, Chile, and Bolivia traverse the Andes. Why is building here a direct confrontation with the planet's harshest terrain? Weather conditions can shift from intense sunlight to snowfall within just a few hours. The thin air reduces labor efficiency by 30 to 40 percent, creating a hostile environment for every worker. One can notice how the atmosphere resists every meter of progress. But this is just the beginning. In response to these conditions, mountain roads in the Andes are usually built in two main stages. At first glance, the budget seems focused on the asphalt surface, but in reality, the priority lies in structural survival. More than 6% of the total cost is not spent on the road itself, but on rock excavation and landslide prevention. Slope stabilization consumes massive resources before paving even begins. One can notice how engineers cut the road directly into the mountain along the outer cliff face during the first phase. They stabilize the slope with steel anchors and retaining structures to hold back the rock. Protection barriers are installed to guard the roadway from rockfalls. The process is only gaining momentum. When the terrain becomes too steep or unstable, construction shifts to the second stage. Tunneling through the mountain allows the road to bypass the most dangerous sections entirely. The equipment gradually disappears into the rock face, reducing exposure to landslides and extreme weather. The route is thus secured for safe passage. Thousands of cubic meters of solid rock stand in the way of the future route, requiring precise intervention before the road can exist. The process begins with engineers determining the road center line and marking construction boundaries directly on the rugged surface of the cliff. Why are explosives loaded in strictly controlled amounts? To an untrained observer, a massive blast might seem like the most efficient way to clear the path. However, limiting the charge ensures that the mountain's overall stability remains uncompromised after each calculated detonation. A network of drill holes is arranged according to pre-calculated plans, forming a precise grid to break the rock in specific sections. But this is just the beginning. Excavators move in to pick up the loosened soil and fragmented stone, lifting tons of debris with every cycle to gradually clear the construction surface. Because the massive volume of debris must be removed immediately, the material is loaded directly onto heavy-duty trucks positioned along the edge of the road. These vehicles operate continuously along temporary access roads, navigating the narrow path to haul waste to designated disposal areas planned in advance. In certain sections where the terrain allows, bulldozers push the material directly down into the river or steep slopes below, significantly shortening the time required for site clearance. At first glance, the bulldozer's work appears to be simple earth-moving, but in reality, the operator constantly adjusts the blade to achieve the precise slope and elevation required by the blueprints. This action gradually carves the mountainside into the initial roadbed form, creating a rough but stable surface for further operations. This cycle of drilling, blasting, excavating and grading repeats section by section until a continuous roadway takes shape. It is visible how the track is firmly anchored to the steep and dangerous cliff face, overcoming the vertical drop. It gets more complex further on. Trucks deliver graded aggregate or crushed stone, dumping it in long parallel strips along the road alignment to prepare for the next phase. One can notice how wheel loaders scoop and redistribute the material evenly, ensuring a consistent base for the subsequent construction layer. Motor graders run along the route spreading the crushed stone into uniform windrows and adjusting the elevation precisely according to longitudinal and cross-sectional profiles. 
When the road shape meets the required specifications, water trucks spray the entire surface to control dust and create suitable moisture conditions for compaction. Heavy vibratory rollers then begin compacting each layer, moving in multiple overlapping passes to achieve the specified density. Everything only gets more complicated. Therefore, in curved sections or areas close to the cliff face, graders continue to fine-tune the road edges and cross slope to ensure proper drainage. Rollers move along the route again to create a firm, stable and uniform roadbed before the surface layer is constructed. Workers use hand-operated compactors to densify material in narrow sections where heavy machinery cannot access, preventing localized settlement. Personnel secure themselves with safety harnesses and carefully climb the steep cliff face to access the vertical rock surface directly. They use pneumatic drills to bore into uneven sections, breaking off protruding rock blocks to flatten and stabilize the slope. This work is carried out point by point with continuous checks on the surrounding rock cohesion to prevent sudden rock falls or slope failure. Throughout the operation, all workers wear full personal protective equipment, including helmets, safety harnesses and masks, to minimize risks in this extremely hazardous terrain. And this is not the limit. The entire cliff face is subsequently covered with a protective steel mesh, which helps secure loose rock fragments and reduces the risk of falls onto the roadway. Before laying the main asphalt layer, workers spray a thin coat of liquid asphalt onto the roadbed to create proper bonding between the structural layers. This asphalt coat is heated using gas burners, allowing the solvent to evaporate and activating the bonding properties of the material. The paver moves slowly along the road, continuously receiving hot asphalt mix from dump trucks feeding directly into the front hopper. One can notice heat and smoke rising from the pavement, indicating that the asphalt remains at a very high temperature throughout the process. Behind the machine, the heated screed keeps the asphalt in a workable state while spreading it into a smooth, continuous surface. Workers stand on both sides of the paver, using shovels and hand rakes to correct uneven areas or sections close to the road shoulder. The crew works in close coordination to treat joints, gaps or curved sections where the machine cannot maintain full control. Transition to the next level. Because any interruption could create structural flaws, the pace of both the paver and the supply trucks remains steady to avoid stops in the pavement layer. A continuous strip of black, freshly laid asphalt gradually takes shape, marking the most visible stage in completing the mountain road. After the layer has been laid, workers use high-pressure sprayers to clean the surface and remove any remaining loose stones or excess material. The spray nozzles are moved evenly to ensure the roadway is clear without affecting the bonding and surface quality. The road surface gradually cools and becomes a solid, continuous layer, clearly revealing the curves that closely follow the mountainside. From above, the winding road resembles a black ribbon draped across the cliff face, marking the completion of the engineering work built in the harsh terrain. Zero meters of extra ground remain available when the cliff face turns almost vertical. In such tight areas, there is no longer enough space to cut or widen the track. Why do engineers abandon the standard excavation method here? It seems logical to simply blast deeper into the mountain wall to create a ledge, but instead, they shift to a vertical construction approach, utilizing the empty space below as a load-bearing foundation. This strategy transforms the cliffside into a structural base without destroying the rock face. Large reinforced concrete columns are built directly onto the bedrock to act as the primary structural skeleton. But due to the extreme terrain, most materials cannot be delivered by conventional vehicles. Cranes and specialized transport equipment must lift every beam. One can notice how the machinery lowers heavy elements from above into their exact design positions with slow, calculated movements. Once the columns reach the required strength, the road deck modules are installed section by section. It is visible how the precast units slot together, much like assembling giant construction blocks on the steep mountainside. Each module is prefabricated to standard dimensions and includes steel girders, concrete slabs, and connection points to significantly reduce on-site construction time. But this is just the beginning of the complex integration. Because the risk of falling is constant, workers operating at height must always be secured with safety harnesses. Therefore, they work in close coordination with crane operators to precisely align each component. At first glance, placing the deck seems like a simple task but in reality, it demands jewelry-like precision to ensure structural integrity. As the modules are locked onto the columns, the structure gradually forms a continuous roadway that follows the contours of the mountain. 
It does not end at this stage. Finally, the road surface is finished with asphalt to smooth out the ride. Safety barriers and drainage systems are installed to ensure long-term safety and durability against the elements. This adaptive mindset allows infrastructure to exist sustainably in the harshest environments without massive excavation. Four to six meters is the precise width of the vertical shafts drilled from the construction center up to the surface. When neither carving a road into a cliff nor building on columns is feasible, the project draws its first breath through this artificial respiratory system. Why drill these shafts to a height of up to 200 meters? At such depths, natural airflow ceases and pressure combined with dust can turn the atmosphere toxic within minutes. Therefore, engineers use the raise boring technique, operating the drill head from inside the tunnel and pushing it upward with near perfect precision to create a lifeline. Inside, sensors constantly monitor oxygen levels, temperature and toxic gases, coordinating powerful jet fans to keep the airflow steady. Once completed, the entire network becomes the lungs of the project, allowing hundreds of workers to labor for hours beneath the mountain while still breathing the air of life. Outside, the construction site is shrouded in a haze of dust, while deep inside the mountain, a colossal machine slowly takes shape. Hundreds of specialized transport vehicles deliver the system in modules weighing from dozens to hundreds of tons. One can notice how the auxiliary tunnels have been widened and temporarily reinforced with steel and sprayed concrete to accommodate these giants. The heaviest component alone, the cutter head, weighs over 1,500 tons and spans nearly 15 meters in diameter. But this is just the beginning of the assembly process. In a confined space illuminated by hundreds of industrial lamps, engineers connect modules using laser sensors. At first glance, joining steel sections seems like standard construction. But in reality, the tolerance margin is no more than 5 millimeters, demanding absolute precision. Powerful hydraulic jacks lift the cutter head into position, linking it step by step with the body and tail sections according to a predetermined sequence. Once fully assembled, the machine stretches nearly 100 meters long, equivalent to a 30-story building laid on its side. From the central control cabin, the electrical, hydraulic, and pneumatic systems come alive with a low hum. In an instant, the mountain trembles slightly as the 3,000-ton steel giant begins its slow advance. Thousands of mechanical parts work in perfect harmony to push the machine forward. At this stage, the cutter head is already buried deep in the rock, while the rear section is still being finalized in the launch chamber, requiring precise coordination between power, water, and air systems. It gets more complex further on. Four massive hydraulic cylinders at the front press the cutter head against the rock face with up to 500 tons of force. 23 alloy disks spin with immense torque, crushing layers of rock as hard as steel into fragments. High-pressure water jets constantly cool and clean the cutter head, reducing friction as steam rises from the hot metal. The crushed rock is collected and carried out by an automated conveyor system that runs without interruption. Each drilling cycle advances exactly 1.2 meters, taking roughly 30 minutes, and this rhythm repeats more than 50 times per shift. Once a cycle ends, the gripper shield pushes forward and hydraulic clamps lock onto the tunnel walls to brace for the next push. In monumental projects like Europe's Santa Lucia Tunnel or Switzerland's 57-kilometer Gotthard Base Tunnel, these machines operate 24 hours a day. Yet today, China leads this underground frontier with over 1,000 tunnel boring machines simultaneously carving railways and subways. This scale symbolizes a determination to conquer the depths with technology. Deep inside the mountain, the drilling eventually stops, but the work is far from over. Engineers carrying measuring instruments quietly enter the tunnel where every meter of concrete must prove its strength. Pressure sensors and ground-penetrating radar scan the walls, detecting cracks thinner than a human hair. High-frequency ultrasound and 8K optical cameras inspect every bolt and seal to ensure flawless safety. In the control room, hundreds of real-time indicators track the jet fans, smoke sensors, and drainage pumps. A 10-megawatt backup power system stands ready, tested under strict international standards like NFPA 502 and EN50545. Only after reading and vibration analysis reaches perfection is the tunnel declared ready. The infrastructure now awaits the flow of traffic beneath the earth. Three complex stages form the basis of building roads across vertical cliffs. 
The path starts by clinging to the rock face using steel supports. At first glance, the stone offers no hold, but in reality, anchors secure the ledge. One can notice how massive concrete pillars rise next to bridge the deep gaps. The challenge does not end here. Why must the route eventually traverse the heart of the mountain? Surface roads simply cannot bypass the highest peaks safely. Tunnels cut through the solid core to create a direct passage. It is visible how the infrastructure connects these isolated sections into a unified highway. Thus, the road is ready for operation.